All right, folks. Um, now we're going to start taking a look at AC circuits and how the different elements we use to build circuits can affect um, the circuit itself. So here I've got a very simple AC circuit. You've done this exact same circuit a billion times, uh, except instead of having an AC voltage source, you had a D DC voltage source like the Arduino or you use a, um, like a 9-volt battery or something like that. Um, so I want to take a look at this uh, first circuit. And the idea with circuit design when we're talking about engineering is to take an input voltage source such as um, V1 in this case. We want to take this input source and we want to shape that signal so that some kind of device I can shape the voltage or current to fit the needs for that particular device. And so kind of a general generic name for a device that consumes power to do something electrically. That's what we call the load in the circuit. That's the thing that does something. Um, you know, for example, you guys could you know have an LED. Uh, you guys can use tons of LEDs. Um, that's an example of a circuit load. We supply in voltage and power to get the LED to turn on. Uh, so this, in this case, instead of having a DC source of electricity, I've got this AC voltage source. In this case, it's a one kilohertz sine wave. Um, and I want to simulate this circuit. Here I'm using uh, the Circuit Lab software. Here I've got a resistor, and that's all my circuit is right now, is just a resistor trying to shape um, the voltage being supplied to this LED. Uh, but the thing with this particular LED is that uh, it can really only handle about 2.4 volts of electricity uh, before we risk damaging the LED. And so I want to build some kind of circuit in between the output or the input and the, this load so that I constrain that voltage so it doesn't harm my electronics here. So I'm going to go up to run. I'm going to go to a uh, time domain simulation. Um, start time zero, stop time. Let's simulate this for, um, let's say, 10 milliseconds. The step time is how often it's going to calculate those values. I'm going to make that 10 microseconds. And under add expression, I'm going to include my input. I'm going to add another expression, inclu include my output. So I can see the, what's happening at the input voltage and the output voltage. And let's see what happens here. Okay, maybe I have to do it like this, 0 0.010, so that would be 10 milliseconds. If I wanted to make this 10 microseconds, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, then 10. There we go. All right, so I can see uh, what's happening here. Um, this is my input voltage, the blue line up here. So it's, you know, it's uh, got a 10 volt DC bias, so it's moved this waveform up uh, from being centered around 0 volts all the way up to 10 volts. And we can see the amplitude here is, a lot, well, the peak here is at 11 volts, meaning the amplitude from the center of this waveform to the top is 11 volts. So that's a 1 volt um, amplitude. And so putting that 100 ohm resistor is taking this 11 volt amplitude, and this is my load voltage, and let's move that to about 2.616 volts. So that, that's get gotten pretty close to the 2 volt um, maximum voltage I want to supply to this particular LED. Um, and so, you know, with this software, we could, you know, play around with this resistance value. And the nice thing about the software, instead of having to go through a bunch of calculations, um, you know, I can change this resistance value. I can run my simulation again. Um, and I can see what that peak voltage is. So here I'm just barely over 2.4 volts. So that's that's pretty close to the um, voltage that I would want from this particular power source. And of course, if I'm looking at the peak, the maximum, the biggest part of that input voltage, um, that does mean that everything below it is obviously going to be less than, uh, well, in this case, the 2.4 volts. And so this is one way we're going to start thinking about uh, circuit design is taking some kind of input signal and transforming that to an output voltage or current that's going to work for a particular uh, particular device. Uh, and we'll probably start thinking about loads, just kind of a generic thing that's got some specific requirements that we're not going to worry about the details of, uh, but we need to know what those you know currents and voltages are 
need to be. Um, so we will dig into some more complicated circuits here, but that's the basic idea of uh, shaping waveforms to use in circuit design.